Welcome to Daily Armor. Today we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12, looking at verse 15. Hebrews 12, verse 15, and it says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So we are to look at Jesus. We got to keep our eyes focused on him, but he also, the word here is instructing us to look at ourselves. We're looking for obstacles. We're looking for uh, places where we, um, you know, we need to be careful because um, we all have weaknesses. We all have things that give us trouble. Um, for me, uh, sugar gives me trouble. The Lord said, you know, we're going to have to cut that stuff out. Um, it gives me trouble. There's, um, you know, uh, my temper used to give me a lot of trouble. It's I'm not arrived by no means, but that over the last over 20 years that he's been dealing with me about it, it is definitely seeing some improvement. What he's trying to get me to do is to realize that I don't have to defend myself, that he now takes care of me. He's now in charge. He is now, um, you know, uh, looking out for me and that I can rest that I don't have to um, I don't have to work to defending myself. I don't have to um, be defensive. I don't have to um, you know try to um, take matters into my own hands. Um, and yet, you know, that little, you know, I have that tendency. I know I have that tendency. And so that's something that I still have to be diligent about. Um, this word diligent, it means um, to oversee, to beware, to inspect. So this is not looking, this is not us looking at others. This is us not pointing fingers at somebody else. This is the Lord saying, take a moment, take some time, look at yourself. Notice some things about yourself. Are you being defensive? Are you being angry? Are you being bitter? Are you being, um, you know, uh, what, whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever your issues are, whatever my issues are, there's really not even no need to share um, what each other's are because we all have our own. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not to, to sit here and point out all of your problems and all of your issues um, because I'm supposed to be keeping busy with my own. And I've got plenty, so I don't have any trouble keeping up with my own. Um, but to look diligent, this to look diligently means to look, inspect, um, look carefully, to be careful, um, to notice something um, that within that may be affecting what others see, um, and how that we treat one another, and how that we treat the Lord, how we um, how we react to situations when we should. Um, you know, just walk away from from something or, or, or stay silent. Just be patient. Uh, there's all these different scenarios. So he's wanting us to look at ourselves. Um, it says, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Because if we don't take the time to stop and look at ourselves, at our own issues, if we're trying to say, I don't have any problems, it's, uh, it's, it's his fault, it's her fault, it's that situation, it's because of this situation, it's because I didn't get that job, or I didn't get that promotion, or this one's mistreating me, or that one's, you know, it could be, we're trying to play the blame, you know, it's my health, it's this, it's that, I mean, we, we're not to place the blame anywhere, we need to be, you know, relying on the Lord, but looking within and saying, you know, the Lord's saying, inspect yourself, you know, watch yourself. If you look at the verses before that, the verses 7 through 13, they were about enduring chastisement. This was speaking to Christians and that saying that if you are, um, if you are a child of God, and when and and I am a child of God that I'm going to endure some chastisement by the by by my father. My father is going to correct me. If you're not being corrected in any part of your life, um, if you're not being chastised, he's saying that you were never a son or a daughter. Um, I am his daughter. I know I'm I am definitely a hundred percent. You know, a gazillion percent. I am his daughter, and he is my father, and he. He is he is consistently getting on to me and and helping me and correcting me and you know and then he is here telling me you know catch it yourself you know pay attention try to catch it before it happens try to watch that you know pay attention and when you're having that 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 um, negative mindset is coming in where you're you're feeling your own edge or you're uh, feeling defensive or 
you're feeling neglected or, or whatever the case may be. He's saying you're never neglected. You're never forsaken. You're never alone. Um, he's offended when we feel that way. Well, Lord, I don't have anybody. Well, Lord, I, I'm, you know, I've, I've been forsaken. And he's like, no, you haven't because I've never forsaken you. I've never left you alone. I, he's saying, I am sufficient for everything that you need. And when we, when we are grasping, when we're trying to hoard something or we're trying to grab something or we're trying to make sure we get our part or we're trying to, you know, do this or do that. He's saying, do you not trust me to take care of you? Do you not trust me to bless you? Even if, if you know, do you not trust me when I tell you just to just give it away? You know, just hand it over. Um, don't let it be a conflict. He's saying, let's not let anything be a conflict. It says, lest any man fail of the grace of God. What are we going to give up if we try to get our way? Um, we're going to give up. We're going to come short of his benefits, of his favor, of gifts that he wants to give us. Um, I keep my granddaughter, Avery, and there's, you know, there's something that I have to, um, you know, I want to let her know every day that I love and adore her. I mean, I absolutely just love and adore her. I just want to, you know, I just want to just, just eat her up. And, but then at the same time, I still have to correct her. Um, when she back talks, when she throws something, when she wants to pitch a fit, you know, and all these that may happen all in the same day. And there's things that sometimes she's not allowed to do because she pitched a fit earlier. And I'm like, well, we'll try again tomorrow. Um, and so she's lost some benefits that she's lost some, some gifts, some, some of my graciousness that I have to kind of hold back sometimes. And God does us that way. He has to hold back some things that he wants to do for us when we are starting to, to, to get off track because he knows if he, if he just keeps blessing us and blessing us and he never corrects us, that we're just going to keep, well, the Lord must be wanting me to do this. The Lord must be, you know, no, he knows that we, we've got to be corrected. He's like, you know, get back over here, stay focused, um, that he's got a job for us to do. Um, and he is going to reward us for that job that he has for me to do and for you to do, whatever it is. Man doesn't have to reward me. I don't receive a paycheck. Um, from anybody, but yet I feel like the Lord has shown me so much favor and so many benefits and, and, and just gives me so many gifts and it cares for me so perfectly that I, you know, I'm really, I have way more benefits than what somebody's paycheck could ever give me way more benefits by going with what God has chose for me. Not what I've chose. It's not what I've chose. I wanted to be my own woman. I wanted to be dependent or independent. I wanted to be self-sufficient. I wanted to be all these things. And he's like, no, because you, you need to stay focused on me. He's like, no, I'm going to take care of you and you're going to be, um, you're, you're going to be my child and I have a job for you. And that job doesn't pay here on earth, but that's okay because I'm going to more than sufficient take care of you. And he so certainly has, and he so continues, he will continue to do so. But he, in the midst of all that, he does chastise me. He does you know, when I'm, when I feel like I'm straying, you know, he does bring me back, you know, like the good shepherd does the great shepherd. He's the great shepherd, like the great shepherd does, but he wants us to look and notice these things that we fall short, that we fail. Um, and, and that, um, it's, it's okay to be chastised, but get back up and get back out there and keep trying to follow the Lord, um, you know, submissively and completely. And if he, you know, uh, what he's trying to do is to dig. He wants to dig out the roots. Now there's some, there's some weeds that we have out here in our pastures. Um, and they've got huge, heavy thorns. And in the front, there are cactus. Um, there's lots of cacti out there and you have to, you can't just spray a little weed killer on it. You have to actually dig it up. You can't leave the roots. Why? Because the roots will have a tendency to, to regrow a new plant and you're going to have a problem. So there's a lot of things in life that you literally have to dig the root out, kill the root. If you kill the root, you're going to get to the core of the problem. And so many times we are putting a Band-Aid out, you know, on things out here. We're trying to have some medication, you know, but you, you want the, you don't want the doctors to give you medicine just to make the symptoms go away. No, that would be crazy. Let's get rid of the problem. 
let's get to the root of the problem. You know, if you're diabetic, but you just want some medicine so you can keep eating sugar, you're not getting to the root of the problem. If you are, um, have high blood pressure, but you're not, you know, exercising and eating right and doing and, and trying to keep your stress down. And when you don't necessarily have to have that medicine, there's other natural ways to kind of get to the root of the problem and, you know, you don't do those things. You're just trying to, we, we, we have a tendency to do that with, with everything in our life that, you know, I don't want to get to the core of the problem. I just want to get revenge. I want to be mad. I want to, you know, take matters into my own hands. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to secure my future myself. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be. Sometimes if we will pay attention and look at ourselves and as God is showing us things, we'll realize, hey, you know, I'm bitter about some things. I, I got hurt, um, you know, a long time ago. I might have hurt somebody. I got to get to the core of the problem. And I need to um, be diligent. Um, I need to do it diligently. I need to inspect it. Um, and and not this is not inspecting others. This is inspecting myself. I need to be aware that there's some things I need to be looking at and being careful and going to the Lord and saying, Lord, you know, I've got this issue and I don't want this issue anymore. Um, sometimes when somebody's hurt you and um, the Lord taught me very early in my Christian walk that, um, you know, there was some people that, that were very hurtful and the Lord says, I want you to pray for them. I'm like, Lord, I don't want to pray for them. They were mean, you know, that was, they were ugly. I don't want to pray for them. He's like, no, you pray for them. And I felt like that he was having me pray for them so that they could be blessed. And I did, I was obedient and prayed for them. But you know what the Lord did? He corrected that. He got, he dug out that root. He dug out that root. He didn't just, you know, get a weed whacker and whack it down. He didn't just put some weed killer on it and try to get rid of what we could see on the surface. Now we got down to the root of problem. And he's done that in my life many, many, many times um, to where, you know, it's not so hurtful anymore where it's, you know, it's okay, you know, um, when somebody does something and and it doesn't hurt so bad because God has been so faithful. Um, he knows how to dig out. Um, he's going to dig out that root of bitterness. He's He's going to get rid of it. Um, but we have to be, we have to be a, beware and be careful um, because we don't want any of that to take root again. We don't want that to, um, we don't want to allow that seed to be replanted, um, because it troubles us. It gives us trouble. Um, trouble is disturbing. It's annoying. It's, you know, it keeps me from experiencing those gracious gifts of the Lord, of experiencing that joy and that true contentment and that pleasure, because I'm over here being, still mad or still angry or real defensive or, you know, and my anxiety's through the roof because of, of whatever. Um, and so I, it's giving, it's troubling me. And I want you to notice, and thereby many be defiled. Many. Think about, not, it's not just affecting you, it's affecting others. Um, when you're coming across and you're mad and angry about everything and, you know, it's like nothing in the world is, is right. And I'm like, golly, there's so much beauty in the world. God has given us such a beautiful place to live, and it's not even perfect. And heaven's going to be even more uh, amazing than anything we see here. But when all that that you see or I see is all the all the obstacles and all the bad and all the this and all the that, and that that we come across so angry and that our face is just ooh ooh all the time, golly, that's affecting how others see a Christian, and it's defiling them. And what does defile mean? Defile means to taint, to stain, to pollute. And I love this. When I looked up this definition, this last one says, contaminate the soil. You, when you are out here planting seeds, but then you turn around and contaminate the soil, what good is that doing anybody? If the soil's going to be contaminated, there's not going to be any life that's going to take place. We don't want to contaminate the soil. We want to have a sweet spirit, not a bitter spirit. We want to have a giving hand, not a grabbing of, you know, not a snap, not a grabbing of everything. We want to offer uh, grace because we've been given so much grace. We want to be gracious to others um, and offer grace and forgiveness. We've been forgiven. I've been forgiven of so much and horrible, just hideous things that I've been forgiven of. And so, but where much is forgiven, 
you know, there's much that, that, um, that I have felt so much appreciation for the Lord for what he's done in my life that I want to turn around and share that with others. And I want to do that for others. Um, I don't, I don't want to dig out any kind of bitterness. I want to ask God, Lord, Lord, remove that. I don't want to be bitter. And he'll tell us how to do it. Just like before in my early walking, he's like, pray for that person. Lord, I don't want to do that. He says, but the Lord says, oh, he wants us, he wants us to pray for our enemies. He wants us to do good to them, to our enemies, to our enemies. If you've got a problem with somebody in your life, do good for them. Do good to them. Pray for them. If you, you know what it's going to do? It's going to help you. Because the Lord says here, he says that lest the, any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. You're going to stop the blessings of the Lord. You're going to stop the benefits of the Lord. You're going to you're going to halt some things that He has already laid up for you that He's got waiting on you. He's got some things waiting on you, and you're gonna you're gonna forfeit some of that stuff if we don't do it God's way. But He's telling us He's giving us a warning here. Oh, He's giving us a warning here. We got to look not just at the Lord and don't be looking at others, but look at the Lord and look at look at our look at ourselves, look within, and say, Lord. I don't want it to be defiled in any way. I don't want this anger, this this hurt, this this whatever the case may be. I want you to help me with it. I want you to tell me what to do to correct it. And remember, the chastisement was in 7 through 13. In those verses, it talks about the chastisement. It's not a horrible thing to be chastised of the Lord. It's actually a blessing. And sometimes the most special moments in my life is when he has corrected me. Um, I will never forget um, a year or two ago, a, a prayer that I had been praying about for several years looked like it wasn't going to happen. And I was very upset. I was very heartbroken, very heartbroken. And I went to the Lord as that's what we're supposed to do. I went to the Lord about it and I'm just flipping and I'm, I'm upset and I'm like, Lord, I, you know, I don't understand I, I just don't understand. You led me to pray about this situation, and now it just, it's, it's, it's horrible, you know. And I thought it was over, but then the Lord, you know, through just Him guiding me, um, led me to Job chapter thirty-eight, and that gave me the attitude adjustment I needed. And with with reading about three verses, I was weeping and saying, "Lord, I am so sorry." I know that it may, may look like it's over, but nothing's ever over. You have the last word and nothing's over. And, and I repented. And so my, 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 uh, my being upset, you know, and, and, and angry and frustrated and disappointed was about an hour. But then about an hour later, and I was chastised of the Lord, like only he can do. Um, and then in the middle of all that, I felt so loved. And I felt his grace and his favor and his benefits and so many things that he taught me out of those verses. And then he showed me visuals and, and those verses. And um, one of my favorite uh, memories of that time um, was, and I was kept pondering on that. And he, you know, um, was showing me so much about creation in Job 38 because he's telling Job, were you there? Do you tell the sun when to come up? Do you tell the moon when to come out? Do you tell the ocean this is only as far as you get to go? He's like, no, you weren't there. You didn't advise me. You didn't help me. I didn't need you then. I don't need you, you know, to be questioning my authority right now. I've got, if I had all, if I have all this under control, then I've got your situation under control. And when I say it's done, then it's done. When I say it's over, then it's over. And he was showing me all that. And through one of those verses, he was talking about as the horse um, you know, he's, that he gives the horse its strength. Um, and it's the strength is in his neck. The Lord says the strength is in his neck and that he thundereth. And then it was like that week later or, or it was within, you know, it was, wasn't very long and our power had went out and our horse moose at the time was very sick. Um, and the, I, I was giving him medicine every every morning and every evening. I was having to give him some really high doses of, of medicine. He was having trouble breathing. And that night, it was dark, pitch black dark. No, you know, no outside lights. I couldn't turn on anything. And I'm hollering for him. Um, I'm like, come on, Moose. You know, come on, Moose. And I couldn't see a thing. It was dark. I couldn't see a thing. And then all of a sudden, I'm hearing what sounded like thunder. And I got so excited 
the Lord not just showed me that and chastised me using those verses. He chastised me about those, but then he gives me a visual. He gives me his, his word comes to life and I hear Moose. Moose couldn't do a lot of running right through there, but that night he ran. God gave him strength and it was his neck. I mean, he's got all these, or he had all these muscles in his neck and he's thundering from the way back in the back and he thunders back up to, um, to, to be fed and to, to get his medicine. Um, and I didn't see him until he got right up, um, to the fence and right up to the gate, and then I heard him coming, and the Lord saying, "Say, see, see there, you know, I've got it under control, and it's not over till I say it's over." But he he does he tells us he warns us about some things, and we have to be diligent. We have to look within. We have to watch ourselves. We have to watch our attitudes. We have to watch our um, our actions, our reactions. We have to watch. Um, you know, how we treat one another it makes a big difference. And you know what? It makes a big difference to others because many can be defiled. We can pollute and contaminate the soil where the seeds we've tried to plant. Um, we've, you know, but then we turn around and pollute the soil and it's, it's not going to produce. Um, and so we want to be careful because ultimately we want to show Christ. We want to show Christ to others. I want to show Christ to others. Um, and so I want to be aware that I can be the stumbling block in my own life, not somebody else, but I can be the stumbling block in my own life. So um, look diligently uh, within, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.